jump in. Yeah. My name is Ellen Keane and I am a Paralympic champion. Thirteen-year-old Ellen was very carefree, very much in love with the sport, very much in love at racing and just being in the moment and very competitive. When I was 13 in Beijing, I guess I didn't really appreciate the enormity of the moment. So I think the older I got, the more kind of stressed out I got. But when I was 13, I was just so happy to be racing and swimming. As I became a teenager, I started to notice how different my body was to everyone else's. And I got really good at putting myself down and having these negative thoughts that when it came to swimming itself, it wasn't like a switch I could just turn off. As a swimmer, you can't really wear makeup. Big tan goes all streaky when you're swimming. We joke about like, why would you bother? Like, <laughs> you look worse than you did before you got in the water. I've had a lot of coaches over the years who may have not treated me the way I needed to be treated in terms of recognising that I am a disabled athlete and I, I do need to train a little bit differently. In London 2012, I probably was at the peak of being really insecure about my arm and my body and I didn't perform as I had kind of dreamt it would happen and I remember Haley at the time was my chaperone because I was under 18, I was 17. There was like an after party where the team kind of came together. I remember Haley saying to me, you just need to believe in yourself because I think there's something great in you. when I started coaching her and I realized she can move in a way without one arm as I'm trying to coach other swimmers to do over years and years and years. I was staring at an athlete who I could see could be something special. I feel like you just wanted to shake me. Yes, <laughs> and that's exactly what I was thinking. It, that, that's the shoulder shake moment. Like, just come on, like, see what I'm seeing, you know? <laughs> I see that time and time again. Like, you see what athletes can do and yet, they don't see it themselves. And you know, you have to let them get there a bit, but then there's a bit of a push. She had to kind of fall a little bit and figure that out herself. It was a real anti-climax for Alan because she, that was her second games. You know, athletes go to their first games to experience it. They go to their second games to perform and she kind of felt like she missed her moment. And I remember her committing at that moment and saying, I'm gonna give it a go. And I was like, I'm already on board. I'm already there, I'm already in. So when I won it as well, so many people were just like, oh my God, congratulations, you won and all of this. And you're literally like, but I didn't do it alone. Especially like coming off the podium, I just wanted to like give it to people yeah. like straight away. because. Like you don't do it on your own. You need a team. You mm. need your you need your coaches. You need the support staff. You need all the people who help you on the journey. I think I was scared of Haley the first time I met her because Haley herself was uh, a swimmer and a very successful Irish athlete herself. So now, as an adult and having her coach me, I just feel very lucky, and I'm no longer afraid of her, which is good. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> I've always believed in her. I've always believed that she could do that. At the very beginning of her career, did I know how good she'd be? Probably not, but I think that was my own insecurities as me as a coach. Could I get her there? I guess when you're a kid and you see these people playing sport or you see these people in the TV you just assume that they've always had a perfect life and it's just hearing other people's experiences and stories normalizes what you may be going through yourself so I do think it's a very powerful thing that Dover are doing. Being carefree and just being focused on the moment I think that's a muscle that you're slowly growing and that's how I learned to realize oh I can be confident I can be outgoing and I don't have to be this insecure person because I know in the water I am happy.
I think I'm more like I was when I was 13 now than any of the other games and I think it's just kind of come full circle. I guess in Beijing I was swimming for myself, I was enjoying the sport, I was loving it and now I've stayed in the sport because I love it and I want to enjoy it and I, I want to be in the moment. Mm -hmm.